Welcome to the video tutorial for pages 5, 6, and 7 in the Reactions Homework Packet, it's Unit 5. Okay, I want to start by looking at 4, 5, and 6 with y'all. Okay, so it shows us to use this for problems 4, 5, and 6. You've got fluorine being mixed with rubidium chloride to make chlorine and rubidium fluoride. So it tells you right here, in the balanced reaction shown above, what's the ratio of coefficients? So it tells us it's already balanced up here. So our coefficients is nothing to nothing to. So remember, when there's a blank, it's 1 to 2 to 1 to 2. So I'm going to come through into a second one, not there. This one looks good. Definitely not that one. Definitely not that one. Those are the coefficients in the reaction above. Okay, And then it asks us what are the reactants. So remember, we've got a before and an after in a reaction. So at the beginning of our reaction, we have our reactants. And the final product of our reaction are the products. Okay, So that's harking back to junior high science. Okay, so the reactants, it's asking me for the first half. So F2 and RBCL, that one looks good. Those are the products, so that's not correct. That's not even all of them. So yes, now that I've taken out garbage, I can come back and say the answer is A. And then what type of reaction? So I've got two things before and two things after. So I know it's not synthesis or decomposition. And then my options are combustion or single replacement. Combustion reactions are always carbon, hydrogen, oxygen only, which with fluorine it's definitely not combustion. So we've got single replacement. Okay. Single fluorine is being replaced, and we end up with single chlorine afterwards. All right. I am not going to do number eight with you, but I want to remind you how this works. So the subscript applies to what's directly in front of it. So that means we have two aluminums in this aluminum carbonate. We've got one carbon and we have three oxygen. Now be careful because we also have this subscript after the parentheses. So that means everything inside the parentheses gets it distributed. So in this case we'll triple it. So one times the three is a total of three carbons. Three times the three is a total of nine oxygen. So when you go on to find the molar mass of this compound, the kinetic table, you're going to take two of the aluminum mass plus three of the carbon mass plus nine of the oxygen mass. Okay, and your final answer goes here. Question nine says, which of the following particle diagrams correctly represents the law of conservation of mass? This is why we balance, because this law of the universe states that matter cannot be created or destroyed. So however much you have before a reaction, up here, is how many fluorines you need to have after the reaction. Our total mass needs to be represented. So in this case, <clears throat> I've got one dark circle, one dark circle, two dark circles before the reaction and two after, so that looks okay. I've got one light circle before and after, two light circles before, and only one after. So this one can't be correct because it's destroying one of the darker circles. In this case, you've got two dark circles after but only one before, so that's not balanced. You've got two dark circles before but only one after, so that's not balanced. So then coming back here, we'd say A because the number of products, or the number of reactants, I suppose, reactants are equal to the products. Okay, And you will see particle diagrams like this again. They're kind of silly, but they're just what we use in lower level chemistry. Okay, So you'll see some of this again on quizzes and um, take home tests. All right, let's go on to page six. <clears throat> page six is the new stuff that we learned today. So we looked at combustion balancing. Now combustion balancing can be frustrating because oxygen is in two different places 
as a, a product, which makes it harder to balance. So the trick that we're showing you, I'm going to switch to pencil. The trick that we're showing you to do this is that whenever you recognize that it's a combustion reaction, because it has only carbon, hydrogen, oxygen in it, and the products are always carbon dioxide and water, we recommend that you start by putting a 2 in front of the uh, hydrocarbon. So hydrogen and carbon. Just guess that there's a 2 there, and then balance from there, and then maybe you reduce at the end. So let's look. That would give me a total of, on this side, CH and O. That would give me a total of 4 carbons and 2 times 4, 8 hydrogen. And right now, only 2 oxygen. On my reactant half, on the product half, I have 1 carbon. So I'm going to start by putting 4 here. That balances my carbon. I only have <coughs> 2 hydrogen right now. So I need to multiply by 4. That will get me to 8. So you start by putting the 2 in the front for combustion then balance your carbons and your hydrogens. Now we can go back and look at oxygen. So right here, we have 4 times 2, <coughs> that's 8 oxygen, plus 4 times 1, 4 oxygen, so a total of 12 oxygen on this side. On our reactant side, we have 2. So I'm going to say 2 times something equals 12, and we're missing a 6 there. So this is a correctly balanced combustion reaction, but we need to check if we're allowed to reduce those uh, coefficients out front. So 2, 6, 4, and 4, because those are all even numbers, we can cut them in half. So I'm going to come in and say 1, 3, 2, and 2. Now I can't reduce this any further. That's my final answer. I know that seems silly to do it this way, but it's a lot harder if you don't try it with this trick. So for example, let's look at number three. Okay. Number three, I see that it's combustion. It's written at the top of the page, but it's carbon, hydrogen, oxygen only. The products are carbon dioxide and water, so I know it's combustion. So I start by putting a two as my coefficient out front, and then we're going to balance the hydrocarbons only. So 2 times 5, that's a total of 10 carbon. 2 times 10, that's a total of 20 hydrogen. Over here to start with, I have 1 carbon and 2 hydrogens. So I'm going to say 1 times 10 equals 10. That's how I get 10 carbons. And 2 times blank equals 20. So that's 10 again. Right? So that gets me 10 carbons, 20 hydrogens on each side. So my hydrocarbons are balanced. Now we can look at our annoying oxygen. So on this side, I have 10 times 2, 20 oxygen right here, plus 10 times 1, 10 more oxygen right there. So these 20 plus these 10, it's a total of 30 oxygen. So I'm going to say 2 times blank equals 30. I'd have to say 15. So 15 times 2, that will give me 30 oxygen on this side. And then we check, can we reduce this? Well, they're not all even, so we can't divide them in half, and they're not all divisible by 3 or by 4, so we're good to say, yes, our final answer is 2 to 15 to 10 to 10. That's going to be our best bet for that. Question number four, it says three again, but question number four, oh boy, it says what are <clears throat> always, you can even add in that word if you so want, what are always the two products of hydrocarbon combustion reactions? So we know it's combustion if it has carbon, hydrogen, oxygen only, and the products are always carbon dioxide and water. So even if I were only to give you the first half of these equations, you see that it's CH and O, you know the products are going to be blank CO2 and blank H2O. Okay? This is some of the new stuff we learned today. 
oil rig oxidation reduction practice. So oil rig, O-I-L-R-I-G, it's a super common acronym used for this in biology and in chemistry. And that stands for oxidation is losing electrons and reduction is gaining electrons. So if you're going to think about this, I'm going to write it in red. Metals are messy, they lose electrons. So metals tend to be oxidized. Metals are messy, they lose electrons. Nonmetals need negatives. That's what we learned back in Unit 3. Nonmetals need negatives. So they tend to be reduced. Nonmetals. Okay. So now when we look at question 5, it says when an atom is reduced, electrons are. And that's why we recommend you write this down. Obviously, we had you write it here on your homework, but on a quiz or a test, write down oil rig, because that means reduction is gaining electrons. Okay? You never create or destroy electrons. Sharing is covalent, so that's not what we're looking at. And you're oxidizing when you're losing here. When an atom is oxidized, oxidation is losing electrons. So electrons are lost, not created, not shared. Reduction is gained, so not gained. Okay. I'm looking at question seven. In the reaction, sodium plus fluorine makes sodium fluoride. What element is oxidized? Okay. It's not going to be this one, as much as you wish it was. <laughs> sodium fluoride's being um, synthesized. That's our product, but that's not what we're looking at either. Okay. Oxidation is losing electrons. So which one is going to lose electrons? Your metals. Metals are messy. They're going to lose electrons. So for number seven, which one's being oxidized, losing? That's going to be your messy metal, sodium. Okay. So really, this is going to be the key for these parts um, on your quizzes and tests. Oxidation is losing. Reduction is gaining. Okay. I'm going to let you try and figure out eight and nine on your own. And let's go to page seven. Page seven, we're going to do just a little bit of balancing. Please remember to check the rainbow balancing video. And I'll write that down here. Okay, it's on the YouTube channel. Rainbow balancing video, it's for um, one of the pages in your homework. And it's just a little bit more visual, if that's going to be helpful for you. But we're going to use the ping pong method here. So I cut my reaction in half, and I write down what I have, magnesium and phosphate and potassium. Okay, Do not open up your present early. Leave PO4 inside of parentheses. And I'm going to copy this in the same order on the product side. Magnesium, phosphate, and potassium. Even though it's written in a slightly different order here, it's just easier to balance if they're written in the same order. Okay, Now we count what we have. I've got three magnesium to start with. I've got two phosphates over here and only one potassium. On this side, I've got one magnesium. I've got an invisible one phosphate and three potassiums. So let's start from the top and work our way down. Okay. I see I've got three magnesiums and one magnesium. So we always ping pong over to the smallest side over here. And I need to say times blank equals three so that it matches the bigger side. So 1 times 3 equals 3. I'm going to put that there and call magnesium balanced for now. I've got two phosphates and one phosphate. So we ping pong to the smaller side. And I'm going to say 1 times blank equals 2. 1 times 2 equals 2. And that gives me two phosphates. But because this is a package deal, it's a chemical compound, that also changes my potassiums. So now I don't have three potassiums on this side. I have three times two, six potassium. Okay, It's the unintended consequence. So three magnesiums on each side, two phosphates on each side. I'm going to go ping pong over to the smaller side over here and say one times blank equals six, my bigger side. Well, one times six will get me six. And that doesn't change anything besides potassium. So we're balanced. So I'm going to say one, six, two, three. So the ratio of coefficients is one to six to two to three. Those are the coefficients 
in front of our balanced equation. Now we did something like this on one of the earlier pages of homework. What's different is that it's a half equation. We only showed you the reactants. You don't have to write anything over here for the products, okay, don't freak yourself out, but just with half of a reaction, you should still be able to tell if this is a synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, or combustion, okay? So remember, synthesis, synthesizing, photosynthesis means to build up and get bigger. So you have two things combining to one thing, if it's synthesis. Decomposition is the exact opposite. You have one big thing that's decomposing. It's breaking apart two separate things. Combustion reactions are always our CHO. Okay. So let's look for those first. No plus sign on number 14. It means I've only got one thing, so that has to be decomposition. All it can do is decompose and break apart. Right here I've got a single plus a compound. So we haven't looked at that yet. CH and O, that's going to be combustion. And bonus, it's not extra credit, but you know that the products, excuse me, are going to be carbon dioxide and water, because you should have that memorized. Okay. Two singles, two individual things are going to come together to make a compound. That's this one, synthesis. Okay, and then this one, combustion, C, H, and O. All right, now single replacement, double replacement looks similar. Um, in this case, I've got a compound and a single. It's not CHO, so I know this one's going to be single replacement. And so is this one, a single capital letter with a compound. This one's going to be single replacement. In this case, we've got double replacement. Double compounds, they're going to replace each other, but no one is single after they break up and get back together. Okay, good luck.